Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good. Yes. Hi, Eva. Yeah. Good smoky morning here in the Central Valley of California where fires are burning all over us. Um, it's August 20, 2020. It's a Thursday morning and it's gloomy all around us. It's uh, smoky all over. The smell of smoke even uh, penetrates inside the house now. So I would encourage everybody to please pray for our situation in California, that um, the firefighters would be able to do a good job uh, putting off all of these multiple fires going all around us. Um, and hopefully, well, let's also pray for divine intervention that God helps us with this situation that we're going through, uh, which, you know, hell, uh, exacerbates the uh, already gloomy atmosphere um, we are experiencing because of this pandemic and because of this lockdown and all of the kinds of responses that uh, government has imposed on all of us. In the midst of all of this, we have to maintain our cheerfulness. Cheerfulness is a virtue. We have to maintain our optimism. We cannot allow the gloominess of the atmosphere and the, uh, the uh, many negative things happening around us to get the better of us and to, um, to uh, depress us. Um, we, we feel sad over all of these things happening around us, but uh, that shouldn't take away our peace. That shouldn't take away our cheerfulness. And you might ask, well, how can you not be depressed with everything that's going on around us? How can you uh, maintain a spirit of uh, cheer and joy despite all of the gloominess and, uh, and desperation and, and tragedies happening to people's lives all around us. That is a valid question to ask. And, and really, the, the answer to that is, is faith. The answer to that is dependence, recognition of the providence of God over our lives. Many times we forget that we are not in control of our lives. God is. And if we maintain that faith in the providence of God, if we understand that we are children of an almighty, all provident, all knowing, all powerful, all loving, all merciful, and all just God, Nothing could shake our peace while the things going on around us could make us feel some sadness. That sadness is overcome by, by the knowledge and the understanding and the appreciation that we are children of God. And because we are children of God, we are in the palm of his hand. He will take care of us. The only thing we need to do is rely on God. As we, of course, do our part. You know, we do our part, but we rely on God for the rest of it. For the most part, we rely on the grace of God. To help us out of any of our situations that we go through in life. Because ultimately, God is in control. And that should give us tremendous peace. If we really believe that, if we have faith in that fact, then that should give us tremendous peace and calm. Even if we have to go through and hurdle many obstacles in life. Like all of these natural things going on around us. I mean, from the pandemic to the fires that we're experiencing in California. 
it should still give us peace and calm that only, only comes from the realization that we are children of God. <clears throat> it doesn't come from a false, <clears throat> you know, a false illusion that, oh, we're going to be all right, or, or the false um, um, impression, or I don't even know how to describe it, that people put on, you know, it's, 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 it's a fake uh, manifestation of of happiness so-called you know by by trying to uh, force the force the issue of being happy <laughs> you know sometimes this this whole psychological barrage that we get from uh, motivational speakers or, or people who uh, uh, cheerleaders of uh, of our um, uh, society who just uh, drum up plenty of psychological um, uh, 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 messages in order to make us feel happy, right? You know, the feel-good uh, culture is not sustainable. That's not going to last. The only thing that will really last to motivate us through life and to help us overcome the challenges that we, we get through every day is our divine Affiliation is our understanding that we are children of God. Okay, <clears throat> that's not the gospel for today. <laughs> so we'll go. We'll go ahead now to the to to a comment, the gospel for today, which comes from Saint Matthew chapter twenty-two, verses one to fourteen. This is about the gospel for today. It's, pre it's pretty long, so we'll, we'll, we'll just narrate it in a different way. It's about the king who throws out a wedding feast. Okay? King who throws a wedding feast and uh, sends out his servants and invites people, his guests, to come to his feast because he has killed the fattened calf. He prepared a lavish banquet and invited his friends and his guests. But then his guests ignored his invitation ah he said never mind you know i got better things to do i have to go to the farm i have to attend to my business and uh so nobody came his guests did not come so what did he do well uh he he um he sent his troops <laughs> out and uh and you know he dealt with those with those uh guests who did not want to honor his invitation and so he sent his servants again and his his people to go out and just invite everybody now just invite everybody just fill up the banquet because i prepared the feast and you know it's going to waste if nobody's going to come around to eat the feast and to participate <clears throat> and so people came people came and as expected they since it's a wedding uh, feast they had to come in wedding garments. They had to be very well dressed up, right, for the feast. And so, um, as they were feasting, the king decided to go around and greet his guests. And then he finds somebody who didn't have a wedding garment. And so, he said, hey, hey you, friend, how is it that you came in here without a wedding garment? You know what that means? When you when you go to a to a celebration like that and you are not properly dressed, even in today's society, what does that mean? What does that indicate? Okay, you don't care. You don't care about who. You don't care about your host. You don't care about the people you are uh, celebrating with, right? In other words, it's an insult. Okay, it is an insult to the uh, the host and to the rest of the guests. If you come, if you just come uh, as you are, so to speak, right? Without even without even uh, having the decency to be properly dressed for the occasion, you are actually insulting your host. And so the king dealt with him. Uh, appropriately and how is that well kick him out of here bind his hands and feet and throw him outside he's not worthy 
to celebrate with me. Not worthy to celebrate the feast with the rest of us. Okay, so what is that telling us? What is the lesson? What is the lesson that we need to learn from today's gospel? What our Lord wants to teach us in today's gospel is that we cannot be presumptuous. Okay? We cannot be presumptuous. While, um, yes, everybody is called to be in heaven. Yes, we were all created by God to live happily forever with Him in heaven. Yes, the invitation was issued to everybody. Okay? Yes, you were baptized. Yes, God died on the cross to save you. But you know what? He who created you without you cannot save you without you. I forget now where I get that quote, but that is a very that's a classic quotation that is uh, that is uh, applied uh, to help us understand this situation, okay? Where in truth, while God, oh, <laughs> what's happening to Eva? While God, while Jesus died once for all to save everybody, okay, He still requires that we put the effort to make good, to be worthy of that salvific mission that He wrought for each and every one of us. Okay, what is distressing Ava right now? Okay, so uh, he still needs us to cooperate. Okay? He needs us to cooperate with his grace. He needs us to cooperate with his providence. He needs us to cooperate with the way that he has designed life for each and every one of us. He needs us to cooperate with the way that he had intended to bring us to heaven. We cannot ignore his invitations. We cannot ignore the different signs that he shows us in our lives like these guests did, right? Who ignored the invitation of the king to the feast. We cannot be presumptuous like that guest and think, Oh, you know what? God, Jesus died for me already. I'm saved. I am going to heaven. Right? Like many of our Protestant brothers and sisters think. They think that just because Jesus died for them once and for all, that's it. Heaven is assured. I'm going to heaven. So I can go any which way I want. I can travel this road of life any which way I want. Well, that's like going to the wedding feast in your pajamas, right? Going any which way I want, like that guest who was thrown out of the wedding feast, who did not care to prepare himself properly, who did not even care to groom himself appropriately, who didn't even care to don the proper garments. You see, those are all the efforts that only we can do, like personal grooming, personal care for ourselves, putting on the best garments that to be worthy to present ourselves to the king and so that we honor the invitation of the king properly. Those are all the little things we ought to do with our lives in order to be worthy to sit at table with the king and celebrate the feast. We cannot presume to just be accepted by God without the preparation needed that this life allows us to precisely do every day. So we cannot be presumptuous. Okay? This is the sin of presumption uh, that uh, uh, this gospel is teaching us all about today. We can never presume that we will be saved. We can never presume that we are okay just because, you know, we do a few things like, like this guest. He did a few things, right? <clears throat> he went to the feast. At least he went, right? So you cannot, you cannot even uh, compare him to those that just ignored the invitation. There were other people, many other people, who ignored the invitation. But this, this guy who went to the feast in his pajamas, <laughs> at least he went, 
right? And there are many Catholics like that. Many people are like that. Oh, you know, at least I go to Mass uh, when I remember or, you know, or at least I pray once in a while, like, like uh, I pray so I don't get this virus, I don't get sick. Or, or, or once in a while when I remember, I uh, call on God. See, it's, it's, it's just like this guy who went to the wedding feast in his pajamas, in his street clothes, right? At least he did something. He went to the feast. Well, no, we cannot behave like that. It's not just a question of at least we did something. We have to do the right thing. We have to groom ourselves properly. We have to don on the wedding garment. Okay? And we need to present ourselves to the king in this feast well dressed for the occasion. And guess what? Our whole life is a preparation for this feast. Our whole life is a grooming process, so to speak. Our whole life is a life dedicated to that point where you're going to put on that wedding garment when the call of death comes. And the invitation is issued for you now to come in and participate in the feast of the king. See? But all throughout life, we need to keep grooming ourselves. We need to keep combing that hair, so to speak. Or, you know, washing our face and bathing ourselves, so to speak, from sin. Right? And, and for that, we go through the sacrament of confession and we avail of the sacrament of Holy Communion in order to nourish ourselves. Okay? Our whole life is a preparation process for that one big day when we would don that wedding garment and celebrate the feast with the King forever. So we cannot be like the foolish virgins, for example, in another parable, right? Instead of being prepared to welcome the, the, the bridegroom, they did not prepare their oils, right? They just waited until the last minute, and then all of a sudden, the bridegroom comes, and oh, they all started getting rattled and say, oh, sorry, we're not prepared. Let's go and get some oil. Same thing is like with this guy who came in his pajamas, right? He was never prepared to go to the wedding feast. He never prepared his, himself. He just came as he was. Therefore, the king said, no, 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 no. You are not worthy to be here. Get out of here. Bind his hands and feet and throw him into the fire. <laughs> Outside will there be gnashing and grinding of teeth. Okay? So, we cannot be presumptuous. Many are invited. This gospel ends this way. Many are invited, but few are chosen. Only those who are prepared are really chosen to participate in the feast. So let's be on our toes. Let's be consistent with our grooming and preparation process. Let us not let our guard down. Let's not be lazy in this effort to keep preparing ourselves for the big feast in heaven. We have to live our lives always ready to be called anytime to don that wedding garment. Okay. You ready, Joe? I think Joe is always ready. Okay, we'll start our day. Have a good day, everybody. That's it for us. Uh, done with breakfast, and uh, now we're about to go to Mass and start this smoky Thursday. Again, please pray for us here in California. There are plenty of fires going on, okay? And let's pray to end this pandemic. And by the way, tomorrow's Friday. Uh, I'd like to echo again the call of some of our bishops here in the United States to offer a fast on Fridays for the intention of ending this pandemic. Let us petition uh, our God, the God of healing, um, to help us 
with this pandemic and end it and help our government officials to come up with solutions uh, to address this pandemic in a more rational uh, manner. Let's pray. Let us pray and uh, join me. Join me for that fast. I have uh, taken up that challenge and, uh, and I fast every Friday now uh, to petition God for this grace of redemption from this pandemic situation. And now maybe we can add the fire is burning all over California. God help us. Bye everybody. Have a good day.